Good morning, good evening, good night. We're watching this transmission design. Mike Martins bringing you a very important um, housing discussion talk here. We got Steve on the line. Steve. Good evening. Steve, long time no speak. How you been, buddy? I've been good. I've been good. Very busy, but uh, definitely good. Yeah, we got a lot of people in the comments asking about you, if you fell off the face of the earth, if the CIA got you, and uh, what's been happening. Well, it could be a, 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 any one of those factors, but, um, you know, if, if someone has a, an imagination, uh, you know, great enough, then uh, I'm sure they could uh, paint a picture all on their own. <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't heard I haven't heard a comeback like that in a long time. All right, guys, before we kick off, don't forget to support the transmission by sharing a video. Uh, channel's full of full of content. So let's uh, go over an article that Steve sent me um, 15 minutes ago and he asked me you know to take a look at it and this is this is show material. so we got to make an independent show for this, an independent episode of this because it's so important. Stovall house prices plummet 36 percent new market and Aurora drop 30 percent. York region market hardest hit by foreign buyers tax. Other measures says report. So guys, remember when you start bringing in foreign money into a into a uh, an economy not uh, sustained to accept, you know, not sustained or uh, can uh, support uh, outside money into its uh, economy and starts. Uh, it's like it, it's like introducing a foreign species of animal into an ecosystem that can't handle it. Money's the same thing. So, Steve, what's going on, buddy? Tell us what's going on with with on the ground there in Toronto and the GTA. Well, it's just as we discussed many, many moons ago, um, things are uh, all come in fruition quite quick, quite fast. And um, it's uh, it's definitely happening and it's happening right before our eyes. Um, you're uh, starting to see um, media that is no, not directly owned or tied to the larger out, you know, news media outlets like the Toronto Star or CTV, um, you know, local newspapers, for example, um, that aren't owned uh, by gigantic, uh, you know, funded uh, news media outlets. Like I just said, they're actually starting to say exactly what's happening. Um, they may be sugarcoating it to a certain degree, but they're extrapolating um, other, you know, data like Zucasa, and they're basically, you know, putting it out for everybody to see. Now, I firmly believe that the numbers that Zucasa has put out and done whatever they needed to do with, um, they may be a, a little suppressed um, because we're seeing things a lot worse than, you know, 30, 35 percent. Yeah, um, you are firsthand, I guess, a firsthand respondent and when it comes to uh, foreclosing homes for the bank. And uh, some of the stories you've told me is scary, very scary, very scary what people have been doing. Or people, like, and, and the evidence that you, that's left behind in some of these uh, instances. Okay, York Region has been the toughest place in Ontario to be a home seller looking for top dollar over the last two years. A new reporter shows. A new report shows. Steve, did you hang up? Well, Steve hung up by accident, I guess. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can get him back here. Let's see if we can get Steve back. Well, we lost Steve, people. He'll call back. All right, here goes. The region has been the hardest hit area in the province since April 2017, with former liber Liberal government introduced to fair housing controls. There he is. We got you. Yeah, sorry about that, Mike. Okay, no problem. So, uh, so the region has been hit the hardest area of the province since April 2017. How many how many quarters uh, gear back? Do you, how, how many quarters have been geared back since the top? So since 2017 till now, how many quarters do you think they've geared back in growth? So if it's like say 20 to 30 percent, that's that's like um, five, six, seven quarters gone. Um, yeah, you keep going, Mike. That's like five, six, seven quarters gone, right? 
So uh, it's probably a little a little more than that. Okay, okay. So the re- okay, I'm going to keep reading. Uh, including a 15% foreign buyer's tax on rent controls, the study from real estate brokerage and website company Sukasa showed the measures have been uh, an immediate psychological impact on the market. With the skittish sellers initially bombarded the market with houses as they looked to cash in before the market went soft, Zukaza said. After the initial reaction, many sellers decided to list their homes, waiting for the market to bounce back, creating a lack of stock, uh, creating a lack of stock on the market. Some areas of the province have seen sales prices plummeted, especially in higher priced markets such as York Region. The average price of a house in April 2017 was almost $1.2 million dollars and in April 2019 sat at 913,000 a 24% drop the decrease in the in the decrease was drastic zukaza managing editor penelope said if you purchased your home at the market peak in 2016 or early 2017 chances are you've seen a rapid decline in equity that's likely a painful paper loss meanwhile the federal government's mortgage stress test which came into effect in January 2018 had reduced purchasing power from home buyers and contributed to chilling sales at all level of the market report said. So here it is, market changes. Holy smokes. You got some at 15%, 18%. And then smaller cities like Niagara Falls, okay, Guelph, Waterloo, you're seeing increases because everyone's leaving the big city and moving way out of the region. I mean, so the further out of the city you go, look at this, guys. Look at this map. Look at all the green going up and the blue going up. Look at Windsor, Essex, Windsor, Ontario, 25% increase. Everything outside the big city is all green, except, well, except Thunder Bay, but who cares? What do you have to say, Steve? No, oh, it's, it's, it's the mass exit out of the GTA. Um Many, many people have done that, and it's obviously forcing, um, you know, the migration um, to, you know, Windsor, Essex County, uh, London, uh, Kitchener, Waterloo, uh, Guelph even saw a, a spike. Um, you know, it, 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 it's happening. Why? Because people can no longer, you know, justify paying these prices. However, remember we had this conversation, Mike, mm-hmm. in the next, you know, six months, eight months, you're going to start seeing those numbers drop because they're now experiencing a bubble, um, a, a bubble that is, is definitely not sustainable. Um, how bad of a bubble, I'm not sure. Um, but it's, it's been said that it's approximately uh, one, about a year to a year and a half lag behind uh, the GTA and surrounding, you know, Toronto and the GTA area. Um, that said, I think that, uh, as house prices continue to go down, um, especially in the you know new market, Stouffville, Aurora, uh, Richmond Hill, Vaughan, um, you know, in the burbs, basically, you're uh, you're going to start to see people n- no longer having to leave, um, you know, the the suburbs of, of the GTA. They're going to probably say, oh no, well, it's starting to come down, um, and then they're going to start to buy. And, uh, you know, things, uh, things are going to be a little different, but, uh, when people start to buy, um, that's because consumer confidence isn't necessarily back. It's more so, well, I can now afford this. Um, but is it a or good time I, to I, buy what, what, regardless if they could afford, it doesn't mean it's a good time to buy still. Uh, there's a lot of stocks in the stock market that we can afford to buy, uh, are we going to buy because it's affordable or are we going to buy because it's the real time to buy, right? Well, absolutely. Just because you can afford it doesn't mean you should do it. Right, but, exactly. I mean, sometimes people make, you know, silly decisions and, you know, they get emotional and they end up buying a house that they can afford um, that they, they couldn't once afford two years ago. All of a sudden, that house on that street um, is now within their, their budget. They're making the same amount of money. They, you know, they have gainful employment, and um, you know, house prices have come down two and three hundred thousand dollars. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and for anybody who wants to challenge that two or three hundred thousand dollar price decline, uh, I could uh, take you all over House Sigma. I won't, but I could, and uh, prove to you that uh, we're seeing two and three hundred thousand dollar price decline. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, we're seeing that. I know Richmond Hill, parts of Richmond Hill, have seen a four to six hundred thousand dollar pl- price decline. So let's continue with this article. Uh, which church, Stouffville, had the steepest percentage drop in price 
uh, price free falling 36% from 1.26 million uh, in April 2017 to 809,000. Wow. In Stouffville, pri- houses went that high, Steve? <laughs> I remember looking at houses in Stouffville. Um, you know, four four bedroom, three or four bathroom for that, that people were trying to get, you know, 1.4, 1.6 million dollars. New builds were going for 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. Okay, this is for a message to my my people watching this in the United States. Guys, these aren't like super, super overstudded mansions with gates in, around the property and walls and waterfalls and drop-off areas in front of your house with a roundabout in front of your house. It's not one of those houses, people, in watching this in the U.S. It's just a typical three-bedroom, four-bedroom family home. Nothing spectacular, okay? So people in the U.S. are think, watching some of my videos. They're like, wow, what do you guys all have mansions up in Canada? It's like, no, we don't. That's for the average family, you know, two car garage house, you know, typical three hundred thousand dollar house in, 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 in Texas, or maybe eighty thousand, no, one hundred forty to two hundred forty thousand dollar house in Texas is like one point two million dollars in 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 Stouffville, Ontario, for some bizarre reason. Okay, new market was next, and Aurora was close to its heels. The average price of a house in new market fell thirty point one percent from almost one point zero four million to seven hundred twenty five seven hundred twenty five thousand in April twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen. So, what happens? To all these people they just disappear off the map. Are they foreign investors, or are all these people just taking a loss on paper and hoping the market bounces back? Steve, what do you think? Well, you know what? It's uh, the proof is in the pudding, Mike. That's all I'm going to say. Um, we're, we're, we're really starting to see, um, people wake up and realize that house prices have come down substantially and, you know, people have no choice but to say that, you know, there is a very, very high probability that house prices will continue to decline. Um, so, you know, who knows, who, who knows what they're going to decline back down to. They could decline back down to 08, 09 pricing. It could just, you know, fall back down to 2012, 2014 pricing. Right. But keep in mind, um, we are we we are further we we're actually further away from 2017 pricing and closer to 2014 pricing. Right. In today's market. Right. Right. The average that price should, that should tell people things. Yeah, it should tell a lot. The average price in Richmond Hill went down 27 percent from 1.4 million to 1.02 million. That's four hundred thousand dollars shaved off the top. That's a four hundred thousand dollar haircut, Steve. Yeah, yeah. And, and keep in mind, Mike, that's after tax money. A four hundred thousand dollar price decline. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that that's that's eight hundred thousand dollars. You got to make eight hundred grand in retrospect. That's a lot. Yeah, you got to make eight hundred thousand dollars because half of that goes to Uncle Sam. You got to remember that. Yeah, oh well, yeah, people are forgetting. Yeah, people forget. I even forget that myself. So, so market average Markham's average price fell twenty four percent from one point two million to nine hundred thirteen, and then East Wimbledon, uh, where prices dropped twenty three percent from one point oh four million to eight oh eight, and uh, Georgina's average price went down from twenty one percent from seven oh six to five sixty. In Vaughn, the average price fell 20% from more than 1.25 million to 997, 997. Percentage-wise, King flared best of all York region's per, uh, uh, municipalities. Its average dropped 17% from 1.55 million down to 1.3 million. Unless you bought during the market's peak and sold when the prices crumbled, the market correction shouldn't leave you panicking, Graham said. One thing that's really important to keep in mind about housing, especially for people uh, who are end-users is that it's a longer-term investment if you've purchased your home with the intention of living there for 5 to 10-year horizon timeline. Chances are the markets are going to rebalance. You're going to see equity return, she said. Yes, you will. But I think I think even five years is too soon to say. I'm giving it a window of about 8, eight to 14 years, depending on adjustments in inflation, depending on our fake GDPs and depending on how big wage increases we get now people are depending on minimum wage jobs as their lifestyle uh, minimum wage jobs as their careers now people when I was a child the minimum wage job was to get you through college and pay for your college and your first car until you got your career job but now everything's changed we're not going to change subjects so Steve what's going on with that 
Well, I'll tell you this much. If uh, Ducasa or that, that the author there, whatever the heck, could miss, you know, Penelope there. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> if uh, she thinks for uh, a New York second that we're going to have uh, see a bounce back in five years. Well, you know what? I tell you, those, uh, <laughs> those lazy, uh, you know, millennials and, and, and the next generation, they, uh, they, uh, they better get their, uh, their head out of the sand because quite frankly, they need to buckle down and start getting some pretty awesome jobs in order to make that five year, uh, commitment come back into play in terms of house prices, um, to go back up five years is very, very unrealistic and, um, it defines all logic. Uh, Steve, the next generation just doesn't have enough money to to, to afford to, to buy a million dollar home. Okay, Steve, I got a comment, and I want you, I got a, I got something a statement that somebody made in one of the articles, and one article that I read about a week and a half ago, and I thought of you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what the the headline is, and I want you to comment. Okay. Go ahead. Um, housing prices uh, are, are unaffordable because millennials are buying up all real estate in Vancouver. Load of crap. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yep, they're blaming middle. And then you read the next article. Millennials don't have two nickels to rub together. Yeah, because they bought it all, Mike. They, 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 they bought everything. They, they even bought the farm. They bought everything. They yeah. bought the, everything's yeah. gone. Everything's gone. Uh, the millennials, they, they bought everything. They own everything. Uh, they control everything in Vancouver. Right. I saw that and I'm like, what? What am I reading? Like, is this even? I call bull. I call bullshit. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so the end of the article says some areas saw their prices go up, such as Windsor, Essex, where prices shot up twenty five percent; Barrie, where prices shot up seven percent; and Niagara, where prices shot up five percent. And that's because we go back to the map and see these locations. They're further away from the major city. The further away you are, the more more affordable it gets. But then, Steve, people keep complaining about jobs, jobs. What about jobs, Mike? I can't get a job there. Dude, Steve, tell people we are the jobs. Look at me. I come. I make it my own job. I don't need to. I don't need to go look for work. We are the jobs. Tell them, Steve. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I, I, for me to answer that properly, I'd have to call a lot of people lazy, and you know, a lot of people just don't want to take risk. Um, they, they want to go and they, they, they want to do their job and they want to, uh, you know, take direction from, uh, their boss or their direct report to and do their task that they're qualified to do or faking it till they make it and, uh, punch out and, and, and go home. A uh, that's, that's kind of sort of how they want to roll. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, business owners need people like that in order to grow their business. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's uh, so many people that uh, don't want to take the risk. I shouldn't say that, Mike. The biggest risk that a lot of these people working nine to five and, you know, working for the men, you know, the, the, there, there is a gigantic risk. You know, they got to drive to the office and then they got to drive home. I mean, that, that, that is a huge risk, you know, Mike. I mean, <laughs> well, Steve, look, you took a risk. I took a risk. Look where, look where, look where we are today. Very true. Very true. Um, it's all about risk versus reward, but some people don't uh, don't see it that way, and they, they just they, they they want a job. Um, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Um, but uh, we have to understand that uh, you know people's ability to, to do any more than that is basically them getting out of uh, you know reaching outside of their comfort zone. But I could go on and on uh, regarding that, Mike. But okay. uh, yeah, jobs are uh, jobs are a little scarce out in Windsor, Essex. Um, you know, a, a good, decent job out there. Um, believe it or not, is is working at Home Depot in the garden center. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 16- living out that far outside of the city, you should be able to maintain a house in in a real housing, normal housing market. You should be able to work at Home Depot and buy a house out in uh, out in like uh, Sudbury, Aurora, and and Ottawa. Like those kind of areas, you should be able to work at a Home Depot and, and pay off a mortgage there. Not in Aurora, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I get it. Sudbury, uh, Windsor, Essex, uh, Niagara London, Falls, Sarnia, London, where you can, you know, buy something for a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know what? That's 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 definitely doable. You know, 
So, uh, uh, Steve, you know, there's just a, it's, a, it's a huge ripple effect. And it's, 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 I think it has a lot to do with a lot of foreign money that was planted here. It's like, you know, when they introduced the rabbit to Australia and it went crazy and it multiplied by the thousands and they, they couldn't stop these damn rabbits because some guy brought the rabbit to Australia and introduced it to the eco species, its ecological species or whatever you call it. I'm not an animal guy, but it's like bringing foreign money into our markets and our markets can't handle all these billions of dollars, right? Right. And I'm thinking that's what's happened. Yeah, uh, you know, outside outside influences that uh, just don't belong. Um, it, it's, it's a number of different things, Mike. We could go on on and on all night long, and uh, you know, spin our tires. But uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's good to chat, and uh, it's uh, it's good to be with you, Mike. We should leave it there, and we'll uh, we'll talk again soon. I think it's uh, trends in the housing market tomorrow, and I will definitely try to make myself available. Okay, buddy. You do your thing. Don't work too hard, and uh, we'll hopefully talk tomorrow, okay? Yeah, sounds good, buddy. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Cheers. Cheers. So that was Steve, guys. Mm -hmm. Steve, the plumber. He'll try his best to be on trends in the housing market, and he is um, doing well. And he's just very hard to get a very tough man to get a to get a to get a hold of. Anyways, guys, um, yeah, I got things I got I got things to do too. I got things to do around the house. It's my son's birthday in a few days. I got to get that organized. So, and uh, yeah, and I want to thank everyone that's been uh, been sending prayers my way for my dad. He's uh, waiting for his biopsy results. So I hope everything's okay. I really hope we could he could get through this one. And I really appreciate that. Anyways, guys, go ahead back to my channel and support the transmission by sharing a video. I'm also on Minds.com, Patreon, and BitChute, and Subscribestar if you want to support me on any one of those other platforms. Thank you so much. Big hug, and thanks for the support, guys.